Hi guys! Today's lesson is about the standard trade model. There are four learning objectives in this lesson and I hope that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to first discuss the relationship between the production possibility frontier and the relative supply curve. Second, discuss the relationship between relative prices and relative demand. Third, explain the effect of the terms of trade on the nation welfare. Last, outline the effects of economic growth, import tariff, and export subsidies on trade. Before we begin with the first learning objective, we will have a quick recap on what we have learned previously. That is, the Ricardian model, the specific factors model, and the hexer olin model. Each of these models makes different assumptions about the determinants of production possibility. And the standard trade model which we will discuss today has its assumptions based on a mixture of these three models. Okay, now we will see the differences of these three models in terms of factors of production, strength and limitation. In the Ricardian model, production possibilities are determined by the allocation of a single resource, that is labor, which can move between sectors. This model conveys the essential idea of comparative advantage and opportunity cost. However, this model also assumes that all benefit from trade and assumes that no effects of distribution of income. In the specific factors model, it includes multiple factors of production, that is, labor, capital, and land. It also explains that trade creates winner and loser, as well as captures the short-run consequences of trade on the distribution of income. However, the model assumes that Capital and land are specific to the sector in which they are employed. In the hexer olin model, it's explained that multiple factors of production can move across sectors. Differences in resources, that is, the availability of those resources factors at the country level will drive trade patterns. This model also captures the long-run consequences of trade on the distribution of income. We start with the first learning objective, that is, the relationship between the production possibility frontier and the relative supply curve. For the purpose of our standard model, we assume that each country produces two goods, food and clothes, and that each country production possibility frontier is a smooth curve like that illustrated in this figure. What a country produces depends on the relative price of clothes to food. At given market prices, a market economy will choose production levels that maximize the value of its output. Therefore, the economy will produce at point Q, which is on the highest possible ISO value line. So, we know that what a country produces depends on the relative price of clothes to food. Now, we will see how an increase in the relative price of clothes affects relative supply. We suppose an increase in the price of clothes relative to food. Simply said, it means that clothes become more valuable relative to food. Hence, the increase of relative price also increases the relative quantity of clothes as shown in the first figure. As the relative quantity of clothes increase, the economy produces more clothes and less food as shown in figure 2. As a result, production in the economy shifts from point 0.1 to point 0.2. 
and this makes the ISO value line steeper than before. Thus far, we discussed how relative prices affect the relative supply curve and the production in the economy. Now, we will see the effects of relative prices on relative demand. The value of an economic consumption, which is demand, have to be equal with the value of its production, which is supply. The economic choice of point on the ISO value line depends on the taste of its consumer, accordingly, the demand of consumer. The taste of an individual can be represented graphically by a series of indifference curves. An indifference curve trace a set of combination of clothes and food consumption that leave the individual equally well off. As illustrated in this figure, indifferences curve are downward sloping, which means that if you have less clothes, then you must have more foods to be equally satisfied, and vice versa. So, we know that the consumption choice is based on consumer preferences and the relative price of goods. Based on the figure, we can see that the economy produced at point Q because the production possibility frontier is tangent to the highest possible ISO value line. And the consumer consume at point D, where the ISO value line is tangent to the highest possible indifference curve for consumer. Simply say, the economy will produce at the highest possible ISO value line, that is point Q, whereas consumer will consume at the highest possible ISO value line of indifference curve, that is point D. We can see that red arrow shows that the economy produces more clothes and less food. And the blue arrow shows that consumer consume less clothes and more food. Hence, there are extra supply of clothes which can be exported and lesser supply of food which the country have to import foods in order to fulfill the domestic consumption. Now consider what happens when relative price of food increase. Figure A shows the effect. First, the economy produces more clothes and less food, shifting the production from Q1 to Q2. This shift from Q1 to Q2, also represented by VV1 to VV2, the ISO value line on which consumption must lie. The economic consumption choice therefore also shifts from D1 to D2. The shift from D1 to D2 reflects two effects of the rise in relative price of clothes. First, the economy has moved to a higher indifferent curve from D1 to D2, meaning the economy is better off. The reason that the economy is better off because the economy is an exporter of clothes. When the relative price of clothes increase, the economy can create a given amount of clothes for a larger amount for food imports. Thus, the higher relative price of its export goods represent an advantage to the country. And the second effect, the change in relative prices lead to a shift along the indifference curve toward food and away from clothes because Clothes is now relative more expensive because the relative price of clothes has increased. Figure B show the relative supply and demand curve associated with the production possibility frontier and the indifferent curve. This graph show how the increase in the relative price of clothes induce an increase in the relative production of clothes. Therefore, it moved from point 1 to point 2 on the right, as well as a decrease in the relative consumption of clothes, moved from point 1 to point 2 on the left. So, 
we have seen the role of relative prices in affecting the supply and demand as well as the production and consumption in the economy. Additionally, based on thus far discussion, we also know which good that the economy will export and import. Now, we will focus on the welfare effect of changes in terms of trade. The terms of trade refer to the price of export relative to the price of import. The general statement is that a rise in terms of trade increase a country welfare while a decline in the terms of trade reduce its welfare. Simply say we want to have trade surplus, that is, we export more than we import. In that way, we will gain in terms of trade. Based on the early discussion, we know that when the relative prices of clothes increase, a country will export clothes. So, the term of trade also increased, which is very good. Why? Because a higher relative price for export means that the country can afford to buy more imports. An increase in terms of trade overall increase a country welfare. This illustration summarizes how the rise of clothes for a country that initially export clothes is made better off. Let's now suppose that the world economy consists of two countries, once again named home, which export clothes, and foreign, which export food. We assume these trade patterns are induced by differences in home and foreign production capabilities, as represented by the associated relative curve in this figure. The foreign supply curve is on the left, whereas the home supply curve is on the right, whereas the world supply curve in the middle intersects with the demand curve at point 1. We can see that the home supply curve on the right means that it supplied more quantity of clothes, whereas the foreign supply curve on the left means that the supplied relative less quantity of clothes. Therefore, again, home export clothes whereas foreign export food. These two figures illustrate the trade between home and foreign country. Home and foreign trade with each other, that is, home export clothes and import food from foreign, whereas foreign export clothes and import clothes from home. This is the situation between the term of trade between two countries. Thus far, we know how relative supply, relative demand, the terms of trade and welfare are determined in the standard model. We are now going to see the effects of economic growth. We always assume that growth is usually good for a country. However, in reality, growth is usually biased. It occurs in one sector more than others, therefore causing relative supply to change. We can see that in the world nowadays, growth in technology sector has biased all the resources channel to the technology sector, yet other sectors are not having the same treatment. So, using the same example, clothes and food, we know that when the relative price of clothes increase, hence the economy will produce more clothes and less food and vice versa. Therefore, figure A and B show how the economy growth that bias to either one good which the shift of production in that particular good is bigger than the other good. When the growth is buyer to either one good, hence it affects on the supply of the good, as shown in this figure C. We can see that RS2 bias towards clothes, whereas RS3 bias towards food. 
Specifically, when this shift in the world relative supply as shown in figure A, shift from RS1 to RS2, it results in a decrease in the relative price of cloth, but increase in the relative quantity of cloth. Whereas, foreign growth strongly biased toward food will lead to the leftward shift of the RS curve from RS1 to RS3 for the world and thus to a rise in the relative price of cloth as shown and decrease in terms of relative quantity. Now, we will see the government intervention in trade in terms of enforcing import tariff and export subsidy. Import tariff refer to taxes levied on imports and export subsidy are payment given to domestic producer who sell a good abroad. Both policy influence the term of trade, hence national welfare. We will use the same example again that home country export clothes, whereas foreign country export foods in the subsequent discussion. First of all, we will see the effects of tariff on the imported food. Assume that if home country impose a 10% tariff on the value of food imports, hence the internal price of food relative to clothes faced by home producer and consumer will be 10% higher than the external relative price of foods on the world market. Equivalently, the internal relative price of clothes on which home consumer base the decision will be lower than the relative price on the external market. At any given world relative price of clothes, home producer will face a lower relative cloth price and therefore they will produce more food and less clothes. Hence, RS1 shift to RS2 to the left. At the same time, home consumer will shift their consumption toward clothes and away from food as food become expensive due to the import tariff. Hence, RD1 shift to RD2. So, import tariff makes home terms of trade improve at the foreign expense. Now, let's see the effects of subsidy to the cloth exporter. Suppose that whom offer a 10% subsidy on the value of any cloth exported. For any given world prices, this subsidy will raise whom internal price of cloth relative to that of food by 10%. The rise in relative price of cloth will lead home producer to produce more cloth and less food. Hence, RS1 shift to RS2. And consumer substitute food for cloth because food now is cheaper than cloth. Hence, RD1 shift to RD2. Therefore, home export subsidy worsen home terms of trade and improve foreign. Simply said, home import tariff improve home terms of trade, whereas worsen foreign. And home export subsidy worsen home terms of trade but improve foreign. This is indicated by the increase and decrease of relative price of clothes. So, that's all for today's lesson. Thank you and see you in next lesson. Bye-bye.